Hello, it's Mike from the Music Shack on a very warm June night. Um, you might hear a fan in the background. If I don't have the fan on, I'm going to sweat all over the guitar, which I don't really want to do. Don't normally wear a hat indoors, but I'm going to do a haircut, so it's much easier just to put this on. <laughs> what do I have for you now? Um, well, it's it's a... Uh, right, I'm going to try and sell it, but I love this. It's a stunning... Um, Greco EG600. It says it's a super reel on the truss rod cover. On this, you might not be able to see the serial number here, but the serial number is on the list and it's 0095A, so it's not a 70s build one. Greco EG600 label on the back. Um, it is a stunning guitar. It, it looks beautiful, very, very heavy weight. So I'll go through the cosmetics first. I'll just try and get it under some nice bright lights here. It's got a really high-end nitro finish on it. Um, it's a custom model, so it's got trim front and back. Um, they are optional. I've put them on because they were spares. You can do what you want with them if you don't like them. It's a triple pickup model with cream-coloured or ivory-coloured pickups. I had one recently that had white pickup covers and black um, pickups themselves. They're Maxon pickups. I've not yet looked up the, the model number that was in these, but I will do that and I'll make sure it's on the listing. Um, everything in it is original as far as I know, um, apart from the knobs, but hey, that's no big deal. There are photographs of the pickups. Um, the wiring is very, very heavy duty, Gibson style. Braided. Um, the chambers in here are not like other Greco EG 600s I've seen from the 70s where there's literally a chamber from here to here with very thin dividers in. This is solid. So there are three holes cut out individually for each of the pickups which gives the guitar its extra weight. Um, selector switch I think is the original. The back you can see there are not there's a bit of buckle rash on, but you know, any guitar that's been played, which is what guitars are for, is going to have a bit of that on. Some of that's fingerprints that I've polished out, but since I've picked the guitar up to play it and demo it, it obviously picks them up again. Beautiful headstock, as was always the case with these custom Grecos. It's got Mother of Pearl inlay on the logo. And also the, the lawsuit, the pre-lawsuit style headstock. So it's like the open book headstock with the double diamond, for want of a better phrase, which are very much like the Gibson ones at the time. Uh, the logo, as you'll see on a lot of these, is, is written in a very similar manner. Very cheeky, but beautifully built. Um, I can't remember which factory this one's built up, but again, I'll find that out from the serial number and I'll put it on the post. Um, lovely heavy duty tuners, slightly gold in colour, they've aged and they're starting to chrome up a little bit, which I actually prefer. I'm not sure of the model, but quite often they're Goto's, which are not branded as such on these Ge Greco guitars, but they're lovely heavy duty tuners, they've been off and, and cleaned, um, wire wool down to clean tarnish and um, muck off them. All the components have had that cleaning, so the tuners and the pegs, the, the bridge and the tailpiece, even the surround on the jack plug has been polished out. Um, in terms of service work, uh, standard stuff, although it was in very, very good working order when I got it. Pots have been cleaned, switch has been cleaned to make sure there aren't, aren't any crackles or pops. Frets have all been cleaned um, with using a fret guard and very high grade wire wool. So the frets are beautiful and shiny. Fretboard's been cleaned and oiled about three or four times using um, Dunlop lemon oil. Um, gunk kind of cleaned out. There wasn't much anyway using, using the usual credit card method. And then it's been really strong with a set of Ernie Ball slinkies set up um, as best I can. I'm, a, I'm not a professional. But it's got a nice low action on it, plays really beautifully. I'll show you, you can see the frets, there's about 70% left on them. 
think the guitar was built about 1980, so it's it's relatively new compared to some. The nut is in excellent condition. I've put some graphite in it before I restrung the guitar. And there is a cosmetic ding on one of the horns here, which I'll try and... I don't know whether you can see it or not. It's just there. I did toy with the idea of, of drop filling it or spot filling it, but I've only really just got into finishing and messing with night rough finished guitars, so I didn't want to risk not doing a good job. So it's a battle scar, proves the guitar is being played. If the person who ends up with this beauty wants to get it fixed, take it to somebody who really, really knows what they're doing with, um, with night rough cellulose, or come back to me in a few months' time when I practice on some of my older guitars. So without further ado, I've probably waffled on for far too long as I always do because I love these guitars. I'll do you a demo on the sound. Not a guitar lesson, they never are. It's just to show you what this sounds like. I'll take you through clean, um, through the sort of mid gain, through the higher gain, and again it's all on the orange tiny terra combo which you can see down there. <laughs> If we go to the bridge pickup, it's got a lovely warm fat sound. beautifully as well. So if I just crank the gain up, um, this is gain at 12 o'clock, 
This, this orange jam, I, I explained this on all my demos, orange jams have a reasonable clean sound, but they're not, um, you know, it's not an acoustic amp or anything like that, so it's mainly for rock. Responsive. The orange amp's good um, in terms of responsiveness according to how hard you're playing the strings, but that neck pickup is a is a belter, real nice sound to it. <laughs>
pick up it's going to be some big dirty riffs this is just stand up tuning so i'm not drop tuned or like that but on these things might not get rid of it <laughs> man considering it's a replica of a gibson it, i've never owned a gibson les paul um but it's a bloody good replica so cheers if you want any more information let me know and I, i've got a nagging feeling that i've forgotten something but if it comes back to me i'll put it back on the video so all right <laughs>